Hello, welcome back to Hearts of Final Flowers. I'm Aaron here. I think I'm ready to go one day. I'm going to say it. So, last time I've been, I'm going to be playing with the Ninja. And I'm just going to go on this story. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to get this little bit of a thing that's going to happen. And then I'm going to attack their mana. I think the Ninja is something like that. I'm going to try to restore it. But I'm supposed to be in a little bit.
podcast to um, invade their island because this island to see is being um, controlled by an island or navy. So we should just wipe out this Brigadia of West Cuba and we should also send some airplanes right here.
the song of the You went on to say that when the God is released into the world, he would live on earth for 40 days. One day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, and the rest of the day is like your day. Then the Jal moved to a day which is like a month and the United States replaced with it as the ruling state of the world and the US dollar became the international currency.
Prophet Muhammad informed us that Allah will send in the last day this being created by Allah who will impersonate al and who will convince them that he is delivering the return of the golden age. If the job is to deceive and get them to be convinced that he is the Messiah. Look at what he will have to do. Number one, he will have to liberate the Holy Land. Number two, he'll have to bring Banu Israel back to the Holy Land. Number three, he will have to restore the state of Israel. And number four, he will have to take the state of Israel to that status where it will become the ruling in the world. And he himself will then have to rule the world from Jerusalem.
observations that you have with China. Forces in the stages of military operations to disarm the siege of West Florida, Russia, and the United, United States by the spirit of the Marines to the Marines. On my orders, coalition forces have been striking the selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. These are opening stages of what will be a broad and concerted campaign. More than 35 countries are giving crucial support from the U.S. To help with intelligence and logistics to the deployment of combat units. Every nation in this coalition has chosen to bear the duty and share the honor of serving in our common defense. To all the men and women of the United States Armed Forces now in the Middle East, the peace of a people now depend on you. That trust is well placed. The enemy you can confront will come to know your skill and bravery. The people you liberate will witness the honorable and decent spirit of the American military. In this conflict, America faces an enemy who has no regard for conventions of war or rules of morality. Saddam Hussein has placed Iraqi troops and equipment in civilian areas, attempting to use innocent men, women, and children as shields for his own military, a final atrocity against his people. I want Americans and all the world to know that coalition forces will make every effort to spare innocent civilians from harm. A campaign on the harsh terrain of a nation as large as California will be longer and more difficult to predict. Will require a sustained um, come to Iraq with respect for proximity and complete civilization the five religious faiths they practice proximity Iraq, except to remove a threat and restore control of that region with India and with Pakistan. I know that the families of our military are praying that all those who serve will return safely and soon. Millions of Americans are praying with you for the sake of your loved ones and for the protection of the innocent. For your sacrifice, you have the gratitude and respect of the American people. And you can know that our forces will be coming home as soon as their work is done. Our nation enters this conflict reluctantly, yet our purpose is sure. The people of the United States and our friends and allies will not live at the mercy of an outlaw regime who threatens the peace with weapons of mass murder. We will meet that threat now with our Marines, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines so that we do not have to meet a with with armies of firefighters, police, and doctors on the streets of our cities. Now that conflict has come, it's the only way to limit the duration apply decisive force, and I assure you, this will not be a campaign of half measures, and we will accept no outcome but victory. My fellow citizens, the dangers to our country and the world will be overcome. We will pass through this time of peril and carry on the work of peace. We will defend our freedom. We will bring freedom to others and we will prevail. May God bless our country and all who defend her. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the this is a huge bill and a bill of the United States that, uh, has conducted an operation to Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda, and a terrorist who's responsible for the murder of thousands of innocent people. September day was darkened by the worst attack on the Iraq war. We probably will just go. Unfortunately, we have a tradition here. 
I got plane cutting through a cloudless of heroic citizens saved even more heartbreak and destruction. And yet we know that the worst images are those that were unseen to the world. The empty seat at the dinner table, children who were forced to grow up without their mother or their father, parents who never know the feeling of their child's embrace. Nearly 3,000 citizens taken from us, leaving a gaping hole in our hearts. On September 11, 2001, in our time of grief, the American people came together. We offered our neighbors a hand, and we offered the wounded our blood. We reaffirmed our ties to each other and country. On that day, no matter where we came from, what God we prayed to, or what race or ethnicity we were, we were united as one American family. We were also united in our resolve to protect our nation and to bring, to bring those who committed this vicious attack to justice. We click, quickly learned that the 9-11 attacks were carried out by Al-Qaeda, an organization headed by Osama bin Laden, which had openly declared war on the United States and was committed to killing innocents in our country and around the globe. And so we went to war against Al-Qaeda to protect our citizens, our friends, and our allies. Over the last 10 years, thanks to the tireless and heroic work of our military and our counterterrorism professionals, we made great strides in that effort. We've disrupted terrorist attacks and strengthened our homeland defense. In Afghanistan, we removed the Taliban government, which had given bin Laden and al-Qaeda safe haven and support. And around the globe, we worked with our friends and allies to capture or kill scores of al-Qaeda terrorists including several who were a part of the 9-11 plot. Osama bin Laden avoided capture and escaped across the Afghan border into Pakistan. And meanwhile, Al-Qaeda continued to operate from along that border and operate through its affiliates across the world. And so shortly after taking office, I directed the al the director of the CIA, to make the killing or capture of bin Laden the top priority of our war against Al-Qaeda, even as we continued our broader efforts to disrupt, dismantle, and defeat his network. Then, last August, after years of painstaking work by our intelligence community, I was released on a possible leave of bin Laden. It was far from certain, it took many months to run this thread to ground. located bin Laden hiding within a compound inside Pakistan. And finally, last week, I determined that we had enough intelligence to take action and authorized an operation to get Osama bin Laden and bring him to justice. Today, at my direction, the United States launched a targeted operation against that compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. A small team of Americans carried out the operation with extraordinary courage and capability. No Americans were harmed. They took care to avoid civilian casualties. After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. Over two decades, bin Laden has been outside of the leader and the symbol and has continued to plot attacks against our country and our friends and allies. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement in our Yet his death does not mark the end of our effort. There is no doubt that Al-Qaeda will continue to pursue attacks against us. We must, and we will, remain vigilant at home and abroad. As we do, we must also reaffirm that the United States is not and never will be at war with Islam. I have made something else says President Bush it should be asked to the left. Our war is not against Islam. Bin Laden Islam was not a Muslim leader. He was a mass murderer of Muslims. Indeed, Al Qaeda has slaughtered scores of Muslims in many countries, including our own. So it is to be welcomed by all who believe in peace. 
Over the years, I've been made clear that we will make sure that Bin Laden was in the United States of America. We knew where Bin Laden was. That is what we've done. But it's important to note that our counterterrorism cooperation with Pakistan helped lead us to where we are. Yes, we're in the downtown where it's hiding. Too late for them. Indeed, Bin Laden has declared war against Pakistan as well. Before the attacks, I was very sure what this would be. They agree that this is a good and smart day for both of our nations. Pakistan continue to join us in the fight against Al Qaeda and its affiliates. The American people did not choose the Republicans' war. Started with the senseless. Yeah, they still have a lot of service, struggle, to sacrifice. I didn't want it to happen. So the thing said this morning was um the camp was a force if there was something left. But look into the eyes of the service air doctrine been gravely broken too. So Americans understand the cost of these homes. But yes, not that important. We'll never tolerate our security. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. So we're just going to keep expanding. Has been done. Here we're going to make it. Tonight we give thanks to countless intelligence and counterterrorism professionals who work tirelessly to help the Americans. The American people do not see their work or know their names. Tonight they feel the satisfaction of their work. The result is the pursuit of justice. We give thanks to the men who carried out this operation. They exemplify the professionalism patriotism, and unparalleled courage of those who serve our country. And they are part of a generation of those who have borne the heaviest share of the burdens of this nation. Finally, let me say to the families who lost loved ones on 9-11, we have never forgotten your loss. We are wavered in our commitment to see that we do whatever it takes to prevent an attack on our shores. And tonight, let us think back to the sense of unity that prevailed on 9-11. I know that it has at times frayed. Yet today's achievement is a testament to the greatness of our country and the determination just of the American people. The cause of securing our country is not complete, but tonight we are once again reminded that America can do whatever we set our mind to. This is the story of our history. Whether it's the pursuit of prosperity for our people, for the struggle for equality for all our citizens, our commitment to stand up for our values abroad, and our sacrifices to make the world safe. Let us remember that we can do these things not just because of wealth or power, but because of who we are. One nation. Tonight I want to speak to you about what the United States will do with our friends and allies, raid and ultimately destroy the terrorist group known as ISIS. So the point is to say, what? My highest priority is the security of the American people. Over the last several years, we have consistently taken the fight to two terrorists. That was going to be a little bit difficult, but we will do it. Osama bin Laden and much of Al Qaeda's leadership in Pakistan and Pakistan. We've targeted Al Qaeda's affiliate in Yemen. Top commander of its affiliate Somalia. So, while bringing more than a hundred thousand troops home from Iraq and drawing down our forces in Afghanistan, our combat mission will end later this year. Thanks to our military and.
and counterterrorism professionals. America is sick. Still, we continue to face a terrorist threat. We can't erase every trace of evil from the world, and small groups of killers should be attacking us. Second, we will increase our support for forces fighting these terrorists on the ground. In June, I deployed a to assess how we can support strange, very strange. Now that those teams have completed their work and Iraq is right. so we will 
is that I could move forward, I could set up an army to draw this area that we have just captured, and use this marines to attack somewhere else. Like, let's because if it's not going to work, I'm going to retreat. And for example, here, that's right, here, for example. Also support Iraq's efforts to stand up national government to help Sunni communities secure their own freedom from ISIL's control. Across the border in Syria, we have ramped up our military assistance to the Syrian. I don't know for sure whether to do this. I'm sure what is going on here. It's the estimated prison virus. support for this effort in order to show the world that Americans are united in confronting this danger. Now, it will take time to eradicate a cancer like ISIL. That's what I tell you, but most of their divisions are wiped out. We have 40 years here, 40 years of 20 divisions in total. But like I said, they have no chance to. Um, what 
and surrender will retreat. No, what skill does this man have here? Just Skill 4, what is good? So we're done here with the uh, air doctrine 2, and we're gonna go to air doctrine, and then we'll US Navy to carry the models 2, and then with infantry and the models 2. So let's carry the models 2, let's go back. These are values that have guided our nation since its founding. Tonight, I ask for your support in carrying that leadership forward. Do so as a commander in chief who could not be prouder of our men and women in uniform. Pilots who are flying the white plane above the Middle East and service members who support the country on the ground. But I'm just going to wait on the help to help prevent the destroyed. massacre of civilians trapped on a distant mountain. I see the other ones in the incredible number of men, so we can help to the most division of the children of the children. It's to be purely exhaustion. We felt our struggle and made a long journey to protect innocent people. Second Airborne Brigade, Ninth Brigade of Job. Yes. 
targets not only
by satellites uh, optimized to be used in an urban environment and not uh, cause too much collateral damage in surrounding neighborhoods. Those are the types of in these upcoming hours. Weapons
populated areas. Uh, they bring...
also with General Graves Destroyed. 